there's a famous story that when the uh, the masculine, the uh, the enlightenment that started, I think, in France and then it came to Germany and from Germany to Eastern Europe, when they were trying to infiltrate Eastern Europe, they would send um, basically people who were upper person, uh, who, who had rejected the Torah, but they were fluent in, in Hebrew language. And they would hire themselves out as teachers of kindergarten to teach olive bays and reading and digduk to the, to the children. They would actually criticize people for the way they davened and mispronounced words. So they made a good impression at first because they sounded like people who know what they're talking about and they're teaching you how to daven correctly and how to pronounce the words in the Torah correctly. But then they would pick the best students in the cheder and convince them to go to yeshiva in Germany. And then instead of sending them to a yeshiva, they would send them to a, to a secular school and they would, and they would turn them into non-believers. This was a, a very... I should say, successful project. One such missionary came to the Alter Rebbe, to Lojna. And he offered himself as a teacher and so on. But of course, they, uh, they, they wanted him to be approved by the Rebbe before they would hire him. So he went to see the Rebbe. He came in and the Rebbe asks him, what is your name? He tells him. I forgot what the name was, but he tells him his name was uh, Yaakov. What do you do? I'm a Malamed. And what would you like to talk about? So he said, in teaching children Chumash, there are certain concepts that he believes are too difficult, maybe even scary for children, and they should not be taught. They should be skipped. For example, when Esav came into Yitzchak's room, the Torah says, Yitzchak was very frightened. And Rashi says, what was so frightening? He says, uh, when, when Esau walked in, the, the, the door of Gehenna opened up under him. Pretty scary. So this guy said, I think that that is too hard for children to, to, uh, to digest uh, the opening of heaven, of hell, so scary, better to skip it because the children will, will not be able to understand. So the Alter Rebbe said, why is it so difficult for children to understand? When a man comes in and tells me his name is Yaakov and his name is really Avigdor and he tells me he's a Malamed, but really he's an Apokadus, the door of Gehenna opens up under him. The man ran out of the room and was terrified <laughs> that if the word got out, so he left town without even taking his his the lease that he had left in the house with whom he was staying, the people who he was staying with. So when they opened his bag, they found all the records of the kids that he sent away and to which uh, school he sent them. And the whole thing was exposed and Lubavitch was spared. They never came back. 
until later times of the Tzemach Tzedek. Anyway, the point of it is that when Esav walked in, the door of Gehenna opened up under him. How, how do we understand Esav? He was a twin brother to Yaakov. We can't just dismiss him as an insignificant being. He is, he is Yitzchak's son. He's Rivka's son. Yaakov's brother, twin brother. Esav represents the severity, the gvura of unholiness, whereas Yishmael represents the love or the kindness of unholiness. So for every holy attribute, there is an equal but opposite unholy. So Avraham was chesed, the attribute of chesed and holiness, Yishmoel was chesed and unholiness. Yitzchak was gvura, so Esav was unholy gvura. And because gvura is in some way more powerful than chesed, Yitzchak was attracted to Esav because if you can turn the unholy gvura into holiness, that is an amazing achievement, greater than if you could get Yishmael to turn his chesed to Kedusha. That make any sense? Avraham was concerned for Yishmael, and he davened for Yishmael, and his prayers were answered that Yishmael will be a great nation. So Avraham was trying to redeem the chesed of Yishmael and bring it back to Kedusha, bring it back to holiness, so that his chesed will also be a holy chesed. What is holy chesed? Holy chesed means giving away your last piece of bread so that somebody else shouldn't be hungry. What is unholy chesed? Unholy chesed is harems. Greedy love. What is gvura? Gvura means, in, in, at least in, in one sense of it, discipline, self-discipline, self-control seeking perfection. What is unholy gvur? Forcing others to be perfect. Demanding from others the children of Esav for a long time made it their business to force others to believe what they believe and to practice what they practice. And if you wouldn't convert, they would torture you to death. That's gvura. Unholy gvura. But essentially, gvura, judgment, is more powerful and in other ways as well, greater than chesed. Let's use one example. Avraham taught the world to believe in God. He brought godliness to the people. He showed them, he argued, he, he enlightened them. He dug wells. What is that supposed to imply? He brought water to where there was no water. That's called digging a well. But you can bring water 
through uh, what is called uh, irrigation ditches. You go to where the water already exists and you, you dig a ditch that carries the water from where you found it to where you need it. Which means you're bringing godliness to the world from heaven. Godliness is in heaven. You, you build bridges or ditches that will carry the water, which is Torah, from heaven down to earth. So Avraham being chesed, chesed is the giver, the, the provider. So Avraham gave and provided godliness to the people of his generation. But what he was doing essentially is importing godliness from heaven where God belongs to earth where God is needed. When you do that, how hard would it be and what would it take to interrupt the flow? If you're carrying water from the river to the town through a ditch, what does it take to close up, to block up the, the ditch, to plug it up? Very little. And so every, every well that Avraham dug, the plishtim came and closed it up. In other words, he was revealing godliness and they were teaching the opposite. And they were just as effective. He convinced people that there is a God, that there's only one God, and they came along and said, just as convincingly, no, there are many gods. Yitzchak, on the other hand, being Gvura, also dug ditches. He dug wells. But he didn't import it. He didn't go to where water was and bring it to where there isn't. He dug in the village itself. And if you dig deep enough, you will find water there in that spot. You don't have to import it from a distance. When Yitzhak dug a well, they didn't close it up. It's harder to block water that is native to the area than to block up the flow of water that is coming from another area. In different words, Avraham introduced God to the people. Yitzchak uncovered the godliness that was in the people. So Avraham was working from the top down. That's chesed. Yitzchak was working from the bottom up. That's gvura. Gvura is a judgment. The judgment is this place is not good without water. So what do you do? You dig in this place until you reveal its water. So when, when Yitzchak inspired people, the inspiration lasted longer because it was organic. It was from within the place itself, from within the person himself. Now here, here's a, an interesting way of seeing the difference between chesed and gvura. Two people give tzedakah. One person because of chesed and the other person because of gvura. The one who gives tzedakah because of chesed is just completely kind-hearted, open-handed, generous to a fault. Every Sunday, he sits at his door and people file by, thousands of people, Everybody gets a hundred dollars. Very generous. No questions asked. You don't have to beg. You don't have to tell us your sob story. You need money. Here's a hundred dollars. Everybody gets a hundred dollars. That is unbridled kindness. 
Then you have the other guy giving tzedakah. He also sits a whole day and people line up. But he wants to hear everybody's story. What is your problem? What do you need the money for? Uh, how much How much should I give you? There's, there's an involvement here. It's much more personal. So what's going to happen is, after hearing the story of one person and seeing his predicament, he will give him a thousand dollars because less than that won't be meaningful to this person's predicament. Another person will come and say, I'm really desperate and I need money. And you ask him what, what it's all about. And you realize $50 will solve his problem. So one guy gets $50, the other guy gets a thousand. That's called judgment. He's judging. Not everyone gets, and not everyone gets the same. It depends on your situation. So the guy who is functioning from gvura, from judgment, is actually in some way more personal in his kindness. Because judgment involves you more than kindness. Because to judge, you got to find out what's going on. What is your problem? How bad is it? How desperate are you? So we don't, we, don't, we don't usually think of this. We don't think of judgment as being kinder, but in some way it is. If you go to the extreme, the guy who gives $100 to everybody who walks by could be saying, look, I, I, don't, I don't want to hear your story. Leave me, take $100 and get lost. And I'll feel perfectly good about it. I gave so much tzedakah. So it could be that it's not that generous after all. Whereas with the gavura, it's not only a generosity of money, it's also a generosity of interest, of connection, of insight, of sympathy, empathy. So it's not surprising that Yitzchak wanted to redeem Esav, wanted to bring Gvura back to, uh, to holiness. The, the, the Gvura, the judgment that Esav had corrupted, unholy kindness. We know that after Mashiach comes, uh, where, whereas today we say Mogen uh, Avraham, because Avraham is our main father, not only our first father, but when after Mashiach comes, we will say Pachad Yitzchak. We will refer to Yitzchak as our main father, because when you fix Gvura, it is much much greater an accomplishment and a much greater blessing than fixing uh, chesed. In fact, it seems that when Esav gets fixed, Yishmol will get fixed automatically. Because without the Gevura, Yishmol doesn't do so well. So the way Esav goes, that's how Yishmol will go.